I'm James McGrath and I'm very glad to be here at the International Autism Research Festival. Uh, I'm going to be sharing some experimental poems from a work in progress called Autistic Figurations. Uh, this, this set of poems, in a way, is a kind of sequel to, um, to my first book, which was an academic study naming adult autism, but it also includes autobiographical interludes. Naming adult autism can be downloaded from the link on the screen, and the slides will be separately available after the festival. So, Autistic Figurations. Um, these new poems all address aspects of autism, autistic experience and communication, aspects of stimming and identity. All of the poems use um, a restricted alphabet. Now, if I was to use, if I was to write down the alphabet to reflect the shape of my communication abilities during a typical day, it might look a bit like this. Uh, so I start off, perhaps like most people do, you know, able to express and do the things I need to. But as the day goes on, my ability to keep communicating, to keep talking, to keep answering, tends to be, uh, tends to fragment. So what I have here is uh, a staggered alphabet. Throughout the book, which is about 80 pages of poems, these are the only letters I use. So, um, the use of uh, restricted alphabets to create new writing has been done many times, um, most famously by Ulipo, the group of French experimental poets um, and writers such as uh, Georges Perec, who famously wrote a novel um, which uh, did not use the letter E throughout, it never uses the letter E. Um, so I'm using similar constraints. But another influence um, outside of Ulipo is a much more personal, uh, immediate and long-standing influence. This photo shows my family. Uh, the photo was taken by my mum and it shows my granddad, gran, my sister and myself when I was 17. And my granddad, shown here, he grew up in quite a poor family and word games, he used to say, were things that people could do for free. You didn't have to spend money to buy any equipment to play word games. Uh, and something he would do is he would write out a word in capital letters and ask me to see how many words I could make using only those letters. Um, Ulipo referred to this as a lipogram, in other words, an incomplete alphabet. Uh, my granddad just used to call it finding words in words. And for me, this experience has something about it of stimming. I find it a very sense, sensory, sensuous pro, uh, process. And two things I love about writing uh, lithograms with a, with a limited alphabet is that writing in constraints enables us and sometimes obliges us to choose words we otherwise wouldn't use. Constraints enable us to say things we otherwise might never express. And the stimming realm too. Um, a constrained alphabet will make, the, will make certain sounds appear more often and the patterns that creates uh, tend to fascinate me. In, in this book of poems, I don't use the letter H, I don't use the letter M or P and so on. Without the letter H, uh, we don't have gender pronouns, no she or he. We don't have a definite article, we don't have the. In different ways, the poems in the figurations all present a character called Billy. All of the poems are written as if from the perspective of Billy. 
sometimes in the first person, sometimes in the third. So Billy uh, contains the word I, but Billy also contains the words I lie. There are elements of autobiography in these poems, but there's also plenty of fiction too. Uh, I wanted to use Billy as a gender neutral name and in this spelling I want to reclaim the letter I from this here slogan and all it represents. So missing, that's the slogan or a slogan from Autism Speaks, a so-called charity that seeks to basically eradicate autism. So using, yeah, so using the name Billy, uh, I'm also playing around with those two missing I letters. So I have a 16 letter alphabet, but sometimes it, it presents just new ideas if you use a very, very tightly constrained alphabet. Um, I've resisted using anagram generators. You can get them online for free. Uh, and they, they will give you exhaustive lists of all the possible words you can make with a given set of letters. I've stayed away from them, really. Um, I, um, my purpose in writing these poems is not to exhaust all the possibilities of what can be said with a set number of letters. My purpose is just to use the, the, these shapes of the alphabet to provide a new focus. And all of the poems address autistic experience in some kind of way. So this poem uses only these four letters. List, it, tit, I. It is I, little lily, tittle, tittle. I is sissy, lily is I. Lily is lit, lily stilts, lily tilts. Silly lily, sit still, sit still. I sit still, I sit still. I sit still till I is ill. So in this poem list, uh, I take some liberties with the language I try to suggest certain words without being able to put them in full, uh, little, tittle, tittle, I guess I was thinking of tittle tattle, but responses are different. This is Billy writing a poem about a friend called Lily. And again, we have those two eyes. Here is quite a different poem. Um, here, here I wanted to use a poem that does not contain I. Once again, the poem uses only the letters in this title, Word Castle. Um, here there was something else that I wanted to sort of re reclaim or, or, or reframe, which is that Bruno Bettelheim infamously popularized the metaphor of the fortress to symbolize a supposed barrier between autistic selves and others. Now, I always found that really ironic because when I was a child, I was absolutely fascinated by castles and fortresses. I loved to visit them and to draw them and to talk about them. But talking about castles, uh, I was told that I talked about them too much. Um, it's a hurtful thing to hear, isn't it? When as an autistic person, you talk about your fascinations because they're so important to you. You therefore want to share them with people because they're precious. Not everyone understands that. Word Castle is a poem about autism, sharing, and most of all, language. Uh, it begins with a name I've been called in the past. In this poem, I'm treating it as an expletive. Word Castle. A word called cast across a class, seared ears. Word set cold as code to seat, to wood, to cease, to settle sadder at a ladder's ass. 
or else to steal a welded word. Dear readers, as slow as allowed, oral world creates a tall wood, a tower, as a sword swallower eats a word, as a doctor orders cool ales to a care ward, as two words create a coral reed, as total recall tastes watercress. We see, we stare, we steer towards a tower, to a ceaseless, classless castle we located at a coast. We sweat real tears to tell a sacred, settled world created cast. Something else that lipograms uh, enable, because all the poems are using the same limitations, uh, or all of the poems can only go so far as the 16 letters I showed at the start, but um, something we can create with this pattern is a kind of sequel. So let's return to Billy's friend, Lily. Again, this is a poem as if written by Billy. All of, all of the poem uses only those six letters. Listen, nine senses tense, still tittle tittling, Lily lists lists, enlisting intensities, i.e. tinsel nettles, nests and stints intense, seeing in and settling, Lily's lists in still titles, Still Lily sits, insisting, sensing, light night Einstein style enlightens. Testing, testing, silent. Um, this next poem is written, uh, well, something I'm very passionate about is the role of fiction and poetry in, um, in helping some autistic people, it certainly helped me, to make more sense of the world. Um, I don't see fiction as escape, I see it as a way into the world. And this poem is sort of written as Billy's kind of uh, manifesto. It's um, it's a poem, uh, also this poem, I, uh, when I was a child I used to struggle sounding the letter S, I sometimes still do, it sometimes comes out more esh, esh. This is a poem that doesn't need the letter S. Found literature. Lead a tilt around a near future trend, roar a feature off a radio. Don't retreat, don't fear failure, read out a rare unedited letter on air. Don't faint literati, denote, derail and detonate to entertain. Write a ritual, dread to tread to neat a line. Don't fear a turd underfoot. A nettle leaf died under a little toe. Unafraid until toilet trained, a red rat, a fat ferret and a tearful lion find a fallen tree and feel attuned if a little afraid. Lean in on auto routine and redefine. Intrude out of a lair for a date, for a dare. Lend a line to a latent friend. One roof, one life, no detail. Raid Freudian terror for talent, fool around on end, feel dead fit if a little frail. Nurture nature in a tent of a field. Edit until real, until found, until read. So in the um, in the final poems of the uh, of the fall sequence. Um, I keep to the staggered alphabet, 
but I also begin, and Billy also begins, to, uh, to work and to play with the spaces um, of this staggered or partial alphabet. So Billy has uh, an imaginary friend, Bobby. Some people around Billy think that's odd to have an imaginary friend when Billy in the poems is now an adult. But what's actually happen happening is that Billy is writing fiction about a figure called Bobby. New friend. Bobby writes to Billy. Ain't our walls a sort of subterranean oesic blue? Or the poem could read with attention to the spaces. New friend. Bobby writes to Billy, paint your walls a sort of subterranean homesick blue. Okay, so in the final parts of Autistic Figurations, Billy uh, begins to face down the societal pressures. Um, Billy, unlike me, or at least unlike me now, Billy wants to pass as neurotypical. Billy wants to mask Billy's autism. Billy wants to become neurotypical or to pass as neurotypical or to pass as neurotical, as that word spells using this limited alphabet. Billy was being, Billy being atistic. So sometimes I include spaces to enable more than one possibility. Atistic, artistic, artistic, autistic. So these are the letters of autistic figurations. The very last poem in the sequence uses all of these letters. Billy was cured of being autistic. Billy was cured of being Billy. 